ദൈവത്തിന്റെ ഭരണത്തിന്റെ കീഴിലേ ദൈവാരാധന at the appointed time all such questions will be answered if you have patience before you make any covenant or friendship with anyone take holy spirit with you jalathalum aathmavinalum janikkunnillengil oru venum devarajyathil praveshikkuka sadhyamalla the lord be with you and with your spirit A reading from the holy gospel according to saint john glory to you o lord chapter 15 verses from 12 jesus said to his disciples this is my commandment love one another as i have loved you a man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends you are my friends if you do what i command you i shall not call you servants any more because a servant does not know his master's business I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my father you did not choose me no I chose you and I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit fruit that will last and then the father will give you anything you ask him in my name what I command you is to love one another the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ today's gospel is speaking about the vocation that the lord is graciously giving unto us john 15:16 we read john 15:16 that he is telling us that is not we who chose him because he chose us let us read together you did not choose me but i chose you and i appointed you to go and bear fruit fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name today the lord just wanted to inspire you about the holy vocation that we all have received in the past people were thinking only priests and nuns are called to called by the lord and they are called to be holy they are called to be exemplary but with what he can counsel to the church categorically taught us especially in the document called lumen gentium chapter 5 is all about a call to holiness this is a universal call to holiness that the lord has extended to each and every human person maybe you are a married woman you are an unmarried woman you are a religious person you are a priest you are a taxi driver you are a cleaner you are an engineer you are an architect by baptism every christian is called to be holy and holiness is the most important call somebody has called me and asked some time back father can you pray and tell me whether i am called to be a nun or a priest and then she is undecided we told her you should know first and foremost what is your call this is a call to holiness let us read this is 1 thessalonians 4:3 1 thessalonians 4:3 the lord is telling us what is the will of god about each and every one of us for this is the will of god your sanctification that you abstain from fornication that is this is the will of god what is god's will that we become holy 1 peter 1:15 1 peter peter 1:15 This is a call the Lord is giving to everyone. Instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. This is what the Lord is telling each and every one. Again, this is in the book of Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44. 11:44. Leviticus 11:44. For I am the Lord your God. sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy for i am holy you shall not defile yourselves with any swarming creature that moves on the earth the, the lord is telling what is one of the most important name of our god is holy that's why the angels how do they worship the lord saying holy 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 lord god almighty who was who is and who is to come so the first and foremost vocation that the lord has given to every human person irrespective of who they are what is their career is to be holy 
Leviticus 20:26 20, again we read to know about God's call he's telling us you shall be holy to me for I the Lord am holy and I have separated you from the other peoples to be mine so the Lord is calling each and every one of you the way you are to be holy somebody came to me this was in Kenya she attended several retreats in our prayer house and in our Vincentian retreat center Thika also in our center in Kisumu they always attend in all the centers whenever we have retreats and this girl told me father my only desire is to be holy but as I was listening to the preachings of the priest I came to know I am unworthy I'm unholy because father I already have a child I'm a single mother now I don't know from where I will start because I can't be a nun I can't be a religious I, I don't know what to do I need direction my only desire is to be holy I don't want to commit any more sin I'm tired enough is enough I want to have a new life we told her don't worry the greatness of our God is that he extends his call to you today the moment you want to follow him 2 Corinthians 6 2 he's telling 2 Corinthians 6 12 he's telling you that for there is no restriction 2 Corinthians 6 2 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 he's telling us for he says at an acceptable time I have listened to you and on a day of salvation I have helped you see now is the acceptable time see now is the day of salvation now at this particular moment I'm calling you if you have a desire I will take you there's a powerful saint in Italy in a place called Cortona she's called Saint Margaret of Cortona she was a single mother she had a boyfriend she was never married and she had a baby then later on her boyfriend was a, a member of a gang then he was then later on being murdered then that's the time she came to know with a shock now she's not married she already has a child she's a single mother she was completely lost she went to a nearby parish she met a parish priest and told him her whole life the parish priest said don't worry we have a God who accepts you the way you are she was accepted later on she gave her son for the service of the Lord eventually she became a religious third order and her son became a priest sisters and brothers for God this is the beauty of our God to Corinthians 5 17 those who are in Christ Jesus they are a new creation nothing is lost you are called to be a saint for if anyone is in Christ, you can please repeat after me this word of God. So if anyone is in Christ, so if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. There is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything old has passed See, away. See, everything has become new. See, everything has become new. This Margaret, she if she could become a profound saint. You can even check about her, and she became a profound saint. The way she was. She was a single mother. She had a child. She was married once. She was living together with a boyfriend. Jesus restored her life. Gave her a new life. So those who are single mothers, you feel now what's the way forward. The, the Lord is opening a new door for holiness. The ultimate vocation the Lord has given to each and everyone is to be holy and there is no exemption for anyone. Let no one think that this is an occasion given to priests and nuns. Me, I'm a married woman. I'm a married man. No, I cannot be holy. The parents of Saint Therese of Child Jesus, Saint Martin, Louis Martin and Maria Seligrin. They were married people. When they gave their life totally to God, they both became holy parents. In 2016, Pope Francis declared that they are holy. They are saints. Again, Monica, she became a saint. She was a married woman. And she is a woman patroness of all the children who are going astray. So the way that you are, maybe you are a married woman, you are a married man, you are a single mother. In whatever situation you are, you are called to be holy. Also, it's my duty and my obligation 
to inspire you about vocation to priesthood and religious life. Why it is so important? A priesthood or a religious life begins and your vocation itself begins. That is, there are three vocations. One, it is to single life. Two, it is religious priestly life. Three, it is to marital life. Whatever may be your, your life situation, your vocation begins even before you are born. This is Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. So when you listen to me, you should know, when, did the, when should I discern my vocation? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Now God's vocation begins before you are born. So that means once he has called you, is forever. And he has no change. And why does he call you? Ephesians 2.10 To do the good works, he has prepared for you before you are born. Before the foundation of the world. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. For we are what he has made us. Let's repeat this word of God. If possible, raise your right hand and repeat. For we are what he has, he has made us. For we are what he has made us. Created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus. For good works. For good works. Which God prepared beforehand. Which God prepared beforehand. To be our way of life. To be our way of life. So the Lord has made us for a specific purpose. Jeremiah 29 11. That's why the scripture says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. So even before you are born, there are some people who say, Father, I don't know the purpose of my life. I don't know why I am born. I don't know what's my gift, what's my talent. People, especially the children, the youngsters, they always ask questions. Father, can you pray and find, is there any gift in me? Is, is, what is the purpose of my life? Sisters and brothers, the one who created you, know why you are born. There's a specific ministry he has appointed. If it is to a religious occasion. Now, I had a retreat in Lusaka. This is in Zambia. So, after the Bible convention... One boy came to the sacristy and he asked, Father, can you pray and just guide me? I have written my entrance exam for medicine. Five times I failed. Five times I failed. I don't know. I study hard. I work hard. So I don't know now, is there anything that the Lord is speaking? So while praying for him, we just asked him, did you ever thought of becoming a priest? Did you ever thought of becoming a priest? Then he said, Father, people used to say when I was small, they used to say, even I was an altar boy, even my parish priest told me. Then I told him, then why did you not think about it? Then he told me, Father, there is also another secret now I remember. In my secondary exam, I told the Lord, if he gives me B+, plus, because I was failing in many subjects, if I get B+, plus, at least B+, plus, I will become a priest. But Father, when I got B+, plus, then I thought, why can't I try medicine? Later I will try to become a priest. Now let me work first. I told him, no, God is your primary choice. Let no one think that, that God, let me choose God maybe as a secondary uh, choice. No. But the important thing is God will never force you. That does not mean you are not called. The Lord is calling many of us, but few choose the Lord. Few choose his call. Sisters and brothers, we read this is uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 4. Romans 12 4. For as in one body we have many members and not all members have the same function. Remember in this world the, the Lord has appointed many people. Then verse 5. Verse 5. So we who are many are one body in Christ and individually we are members of one another. Six. We have gifts that differ according to grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Seven. Ministry in ministering. The teacher in teaching. Verse eight. The exhorter in exhortation. 
the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. It's important that we need all these occasions. We need priests. Do you think that we need priests? One day, a mother brought to me three boys. They are three boys. They, are, uh, they have brought for prayer. So while praying, because they are three boys, I asked them, looking into their eyes, who wants to become a priest? Who wants to become a priest? Then the eldest one is lifting the hand of the youngest one and saying, Father, this is the one who wants to become a priest. I told him, you keep your hands down. If he wants, he will say. It's very easy to make others priests and nuns. But do you know that the Lord is also calling you? This is our escapism. This, that, that's why, my dear sisters and brothers, we should know the purpose of vocation. Exodus 2.23. Then you will know why God is calling someone. Exodus, this is 2.23. Let us read. Where the vocation, how God chooses someone before their birth? Verse 23. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, they cry for help rose up to God. Remember, the people of Israel were in pain. They were in slavery and they cried to their creator. Lord, we are suffering. We have no one to help. We are persecuted. Then was Exodus God heard their groaning and we hear when the people cried, God heard their cry and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is when they cried. Then we read chapter 3 verse 3, 7. Chapter 3 verse 7. Then the Lord said, he heard the voice. He heard the cry and he said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. Then verse 10. Verse 10. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Sisters and brothers, when the people of Israel cried, the Lord gave them an answer. Can you say what was the answer? When the people of Israel cried, the Lord gave an answer. Do you know what was the answer? That answer is called Moses. Sisters and brothers, when the people cry, the Lord gave the people an answer. This answer is called vocation to religious life or consecrated life. This is Judges chapter 6, 6 to 8. This is book of Judges. This is how God calls someone. Before their birth, thus Israel was greatly impoverished because of Midian. And the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help when people suffered. We read verse 7. They cried. When the Israelites cried to the Lord on account of Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites and he said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I led you out from Egypt and brought you out of the house of slavery. Now, this prophet, this judge is called Judge Gideon. This is the beginning of the call, the occasion of Gideon. Again, in the prophet Daniel chapter 13, Verse 35 we read, this is an important scripture, when, when Susanna cried, this is Daniel 13.35. I will read it from here. Through her tears, Susanna cried unto the Lord. This is chapter 13, verse 35. Now, when Susanna cried, because she was being falsely accused, she was persecuted. We read, she cried and her tears came unto the Lord. When Susanna was oppressed, she lifted her eyes to the heavens and cried. Then the Lord heard her cry. How? We read verse 44. The Lord called a young man called Daniel. And Daniel shouted, I want no part 
in shedding this innocent woman's blood. Sisters and brothers, who is Daniel? Daniel is an answer to the cry of Susanna. Maybe you are in United Kingdom, maybe you are in Kuwait, maybe you are in India, maybe you are in Pakistan, in America, in Canada, in Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi, wherever you are. Remember, there is a Susanna crying. Can you be an answer? Can you be an answer, sisters and brothers, when the people of God is crying? Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8 Isaiah 6 8 when people cried the Lord is us telling then I heard the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who will go for us I have heard my people crying whom shall I send who will go for us are you here to lift your younger brother's hand are you here to lift your, your younger sister's hand? Or can you become that mouthpiece? Say, little Therese came to know this. And she gave up everything when she was just 13 years. And she gave up everything to follow Jesus. And she became a profound saint. There are people who say, we just had, we have this, uh, this uh, youth conference. This is called International Youth Conference. And in this youth conference, we have this under the roof uh, seminars. Now, somebody asked a question that when will the women can become a priest because now the priesthood is only for the men. Sisters and brothers, why people are, maybe people think that priesthood is very important is because they think that the priests are the only one who can celebrate the Holy Mass and they are maybe superior to other people. But we are totally wrong. Who is superior? A saint. As what is important is to become holy. Even Saint John Paul II and all the world leaders, there was a time they knelt in front of a saint called Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska. Was she a priest? No. She was a nun who was just educated class 3. She only knew how to read and write. She only knew washing clothes and washing plates and cleaning the floor. Nothing else. And now this is the fulfillment of Isaiah 49, 6 and 7. Sisters and brothers, the, the vocation to be holy is the most important. He says, it's too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations and that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. And once you become holy, what will happen? Verse 7. Verse 7. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, to one deeply despised abode by the nations, the slave of rulers, Maybe you are a slave, you are a house help, you are a doorkeeper, you are not educated, you are an ordinary woman, you know only small little things, you are not been to school, you have a lot of sufferings. Maybe you are a slave to each and every one. But the Lord is promising, once you be holy, surrender your, li your life to the Lord, kings shall see and stand up. Princess. And they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. St. Catherine of Siena, she was uneducated. Pope trembled in front of her, popes and cardinals. Faustina, St. Therese of Child Jesus, St. Alphonsa, sisters and brothers, the Lord is inviting us to be holy. And even surrender your life to the Lord because there is no greater thing to become a follower of the Lord. A follower of the Lord. For example, when you imitate the Lord, everything changes. We have a testimony of an Irish uh, nun. She is called Sister Claire Crockett. There is a beautiful uh, movie they have made on the YouTube. This is called all or nothing. Who is Claire? Claire was an young girl. She just wanted to become famous. Her only desire is to become world famous. And in order to become famous, she started acting, she started singing, and all of a sudden, and she made so many friendships. She was making fun with the boys. She was taking beer, smoking. She was enjoying her uh, teenage days because she just 
of this age she is a modern girl now some of her friends said we are going for a pilgrimage to spain she is from ireland the friend said we are going for a pilgrim pilgrimage to spain she is not interested in god she is not interested in prayer she is not interested in pilgrimage but the friend said there will be so many boys she just wanted to make fun she just wanted to make mockery of others she just wanted to enjoy so she said if there are so many different young people i will also join so claire joined the pilgrimage she reached spain where they only speak spanish this was the holy week the priest during the service she ca he carried a heavy crucifix and told the pilg the pilgrims if you want to kiss the feet of jesus he can come one by one and kiss the feet this priest held the crucifix claire also came in the line for her everything is a fun but when she came to start kissing the feet of jesus she found she was not just kissing a wood piece she found it was flesh she found the smell of the blood she had a voice is for you claire i am suffering i shed blood is for you claire she could not control tears she started crying and crying and crying unceasingly because she came to know jesus was real he is real she told the priest i want to become a nun the priest said no you are too emotional it's no time you are of this world you cannot just go and leave everything and become a nun after all you are a star and you want to become famous and nothing is possible if you become a nun claire said no it's god who is calling me but the priest discouraged her told her go back to ireland meet your parents and take time but claire could not resist that call she got inside sisters and brothers she came back but she joined the convent even then she had a lot of temptations difficulties but she decided to give her life totally to god sisters and brothers she became a nun and her superiors had sent her to ecuador where there was an earthquake in the earthquake they were all trapped in a school though all those were trapped they were escaped except claire crockett she was the only one who died in an in an young age and now if you just check youtube claire crockett you will find an, an amazing vocation of an ordinary worldly secular woman who just wanted to become famous now she is one of the most famous nun from ireland late sister claire crockett sisters and brothers whatever may be your situation when the lord is calling you if you are willing to give up everything and follow you will be become a new person you will become a new creation it is worth following jesus sisters and brothers people can choose to be a pilot or a teacher or an engineer or an architect but no human person can choose to be a priest or a nun or a consecrated it's a gift from god that's why the lord said it's i who chose you ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 we read he is in inspiring us ephesians 4:1 i therefore the prisoner in the lord beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called and verse 4 he has verse 4 there is one body and one spirit just as you are called to the one hope of your calling if if the lord has called you sisters and brothers he will give you the grace to fulfill it again this is 1 peter 4:10 he will not just call you without giving you the grace he will also give you the grace 1 peter 4:10 like good stewards of the manifold grace of god serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received he is inviting us to follow the lord with the gift that he has given you and how do we discern whether we the, the lord is calling us saint therese of avila says how do we know whether something is from god she says there are four conditions maybe you have a, have a vision you have a dream you have somebody is telling you that you are called by god how do you discern whether it is god who is calling you the first thing it should be in the scripture it should be based on the word of god it is the word that leads our path psalm 119 verse 130 psalm 119 verse 130 
is the scripture that will lead us that will show us the light the unfolding of your words gives light it imparts understanding to the simple maybe you are a simple person i met a girl she is called consalata in kenya so it was years back and now she was a nurse and she wanted to discern whether the lord is calling her i told her it is your vocation me as a priest i can't tell you whether you are called or not but i can give you a direction i told her take your bible like this keep your hand on the bible and tell the lord my jesus i know you are hiding in this bible because you are the word made flesh as i open this bible please speak to me lord i want to know your will lord i have only one life and i wanted to surrender this life to you but lord i need a confirmation i don't want to go wrong i don't just want to join the convent today and tomorrow i want to come back please guide me she said she prayed and the lord gave her judges chapter 18 verses 5 and 6 this is the word that spoke to her then they said to him enquire of god that we may know whether the mission we are undertaking will succeed the priest replied go in peace the mission you are on is under the eye of the lord sisters and brothers that's the way she joined she joined the convent now she said none but after some time she sent me an email saying that even after joining the convent she had a doubt she is not sure whether still she is called to that same convent or she wants to leave that convent and join another congregation and she said again she prayed lord where else i go i don't have anyone to give me an exact answer but i know in the bible you will speak to me she opened and she got luke 1931 Luke 19:31 This is what the Lord told her If anyone ask you why are you untying it this this all about a donkey just say this the Lord needs it she said father i'm a donkey and i when i wa- i was being accused when people laugh at me i feel like no this is not my call then the Lord is telling maybe your superiors your community they don't give you that much of value but i tell you i need you sisters and brothers she is a very uh, inspiring religious nun today because she asked the lord in the bible he is hiding in the bible this word of god my dear sisters and brothers this the lord speaks to us he speaks to us psalm 119 verse 105 we should never forget we should by heart this word of god psalm 119 verse 105 your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path do you feel that you are in a dark situation you are unable to take a decision in your life you don't know the way forward wherever you look whomever you ask is only darkness nobody is guiding you then the lord is telling my word is a lamp to your feet and is a light to your path my child can you look at me saint therese of avila said how do you know what that the vocation it is from god first thing it should be in the bible based on the scripture second thing it should be in in connection with the teachings of the church because every es- explanation in the bible is authentically interpreted by the church so we cannot just interpret the scripture the way we need the third one it will lead you to a new thing it will help you to take a new decision imagine she was a nurse she had a job she had a source of income and even then how did she get the grace to leave everything and go for the lord the lord spoke to her the way the lord spoke to abraham the lord spoke to amos who was just in the field the way the lord spoke to ezekiel jeremiah even today he is speaking to you he is calling you even as you are listening to my preaching sisters and brothers the lord is calling he is asking my child do you find it is worth to follow me the fourth step saint therese of avila teaches is that you will never forget it that means If the Lord has called you I told you it's before you are born you will never forget it Saint Faustina she has written in the diary it was when she was 7 years of age she felt inside her that 
she has to become a nun. But because she was born in a family of nine children, there was a lot of poverty, she has to do all the work. The parents did not agree, she just hidden this desire. Then later it was when she was 19 years, she was just in a club, she was dancing with her other friends, she saw a vision of crucified the, the Lord. She stopped dancing, she just kept quiet in a corner and she came to know now she cannot resist this call because she had a voice, how long you will keep me away, how long you will run away from me, how long you will keep me off. Then Faustina started to go to enter the convent. Sisters and brothers, because she was only class 3, she was not so much educated, she knocked 15 convents. They said, we don't want cleaners, we don't want house helps, we, we don't want the servants, because they only think, take Faustina's, she is not educated, but the 15th congregation, the congregation of Our Lady of Mercy accepted her. She did not give up, because she knew the Lord is calling her. Now, sisters and brothers, when we come to know about this vocation, now you may be thinking that now you are already old enough. Now what, what will happen? Saint Therese of child Jesus started to follow Jesus when she was 13 years, but for Augustine it took 33 years. For Nicholas it took after 50 years. Even she had a family, he had a family and children. Still he did not uh, stop following the Lord. Whatever your situation, the Lord is inviting you to be holy. If you are called to be a religious, the Lord himself will inspire you inside your heart. What you need to do? You have to pray. I give you this important prayer. Your prayer should be Psalm 48, Psalm chapter 40 verse 8. You have to, if you have a desire to know the will of God, you yourself have to ask the Lord. And the scripture says, Lord, I delight to do your will. Let's repeat. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will. Oh my God. Oh my God. Your law is within my heart. Your law is within my heart. I delight to do your will, oh my God. I delight to do your will, oh your my God. Your law is within my heart. Your law is within my Again, heart. Again, 1 John 2 17. To discern the occasion to know what does the Lord is calling you to. 1 John 2 17. And the world and his desire are passing away. And the world and its desire are passing away. But those who do the will of God live forever. But those who do the will of God live forever. Psalm 30 to 8. Psalm 30 to 8. Let's also claim this. I will instruct you. I will instruct and you. Teach you. And teach you. The way you should go. The way you should go. I will counsel you. I will counsel with you. My with my eye upon you. With my eye upon you. He is telling you, he himself will instruct. Then Psalm 143 verse 10. Psalm 143 verse 10. Teach me to do your will. Teach me to do your will. For you are my God. For you are my God. Let your good spirit. Let your good spirit. Lead me on a level path. Lead me on a level path. Then Job 6.24. Teach me. Teach me. And I will be silent. And I will be silent. Make me understand. Make me understand. How I have gone wrong. How I have gone wrong. Then Psalm 86 11. Psalm 86 11. Teach me your way, O Lord. Teach me your way, O Lord. That I may walk in your truth. That I may walk in your Give truth. me an undivided heart. Give me an undivided heart. To revere your name. To revere your name. Sisters and brothers. These are some of the basic scriptures you are asking directly to your God. Because many as you listen to me, you are confused. Whatever you do, there is no prosperity. You find that there is something that is different. Maybe you always wanted to pray. You always wanted to be in the church. The only place you feel free, you feel happy is when you are in the church, when you pray, when you are serving the Lord. And you find that you have no joy anywhere outside. Don't you know that? The Lord is telling something to you that you are my private portion. I have called you for myself. Sisters and brothers, I can say it from my heart because I had a vocation and I have abandoned it. Graciously, he brought me back and I know today I can never be successful in any other life. And this is the life he called me and I am so privileged and honored to be a priest and I don't find there is anything else.
that is better than serving god because you cannot choose to be a priest it's a occasion from the king of kings the lord of lords the prince of peace and who are we the mortal beings to be called by god it's not just to be a priest serving god maybe you are singing for the lord you are working in the church you are doing some some ministry for the lord you are all in a way according to what the church teaches are equally called and commissioned by the lord now as you hear me maybe you are already abandoned your vocation maybe you are an ex priest maybe you are an ex nun maybe you are an ex seminarian now you feel it is confused now you don't know what to do don't worry the lord this is 2 timothy 2:13 the, the lord gave peter the freedom to deny him and to return to him 2 timothy 2:13 he is telling even if you are faithless he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself i know an an ex nun i met her in dola in uh, sambia she is an ex religious now she is running an orphanage she has so many orphans so when we went there for a convention we went and visited this orphanage so she is an ex nun but now she is living for this young small uh, little children infants they are very yeah, small children so when we visited this orphanage we just asked one of the little children uh, who is your mother then one child uh, took me to this ex nun to this sister and said this is my mama this is my mother then i was so surprised then this sister is full of love for the small children she lifted the ha her in her hand and she said yes this is my daughter not just her more than 100 orphans are there and this this single uh, woman this single lady she is giving meaning to the meaningless people she is becoming a mother to the motherless this is isaiah 50 for one she is fulfilling the word of the lord in her life as single as she is as unmarried as she is as she is an ex now she is fulfilling the mission of the lord by being a mother to the orphans giving meaning and purpose to the orphans to the abandoned otherwise they will not have an identity and a dignity now she became a mother to the motherless sing o barren one who did not bear burst into song and shout who you who have not been in labor for the children of the desolate woman will be more than the children of her that is married says the lord that this mother this lady this ex nun really fulfilled the mission of the lord whereby she gave meaning and purpose and dignity to the orphans that's the way the lord used her though she left the vocation she is still fulfilling that vocation maybe you are leading a single life you are not at married you have no children you don't know now what is the purpose of your life and the lord is inspiring you still he will never forget you this is isaiah 53 from 4 he is telling you maybe you are single you are lonely no one is there to look after you he is telling you surely he has isaiah 54 from 3 isaiah 54 from 3 he is telling you isaiah 54 from 3 he is telling for you will spread out to the right and to the left and your descendants will possess the nations and will settle the desolate towns was for do not fear for you will not be ashamed do not be discouraged for you will not suffer disgrace for you will forget the shame of your youth and the disgrace of your widowhood you will remember no more verse 5 because the lord is telling every single woman for your maker is your husband the lord of hosts is his name the holy one of israel is your redeemer the god of the whole earth he is called sisters and brothers today the lord is inspiring us that he has called each and every one of you to be holy and there is no greater occasion other than being holy and if you are called to be a priest or a nun 
please don't look at anyone to tell you that whether you are called just look at the word of god ask the lord pray those discerning word of god and ask the lord lord please can you whisper in my ears the way that you spoke to samuel we know that this is one samuel 3:10 he heard the lord was calling her in the night that's the way he could become a servant of the lord now the lord came and stood there calling us before samuel samuel and samuel said speak for your servant is listening sisters and brothers maybe sometimes god can call you the way he can directly speak to you it can be through your priest through your parents through your siblings through your teachers through your neighbors he can speak to you call you in different ways listen to that and if you find in deep inside your heart you have a vocation follow the lord it's important to be a priest or a nun as i have already explained to you a priest or a nun is an answer to the cry of the people do you want to be an answer to the people crying in the united kingdom in ireland in the northern ireland in scotland in america in canada in france in spain in portugal in brazil they had lack of priest people are suffering because they don't have enough priests can you become a mouthpiece Please don't lift the hand of your younger brother. Can you raise your own hand? Can you take up that cross and follow your master who is calling you to serve him? And again, the way you are, the, he wants you to imitate him, to follow him in the state that he is calling you. The way that you are called, you have to follow him. The way that you are called, don't look at anyone. The way you are, maybe you are a single mother maybe you are a married woman or a married man you also have a duty to fulfill a vocation to fulfill this vocation is to be holy and inspire your children to be holy inspire them never discourage anyone to follow the lord never discourage today if you are uh, we get some kind some messages that some because our style is different lord sisters and brothers we earnestly pray let us have english priests to speak to the english people this is also god's will why the missionaries are coming because we don't have enough priests from this land let us pray earnestly sisters and brothers the only prayer request the most holy son of god made to us he made a prayer request does he need prayer but the lord jesus made a prayer request he said the harvest is plenty but the laborers are few so pray that the lord may send laborers to the harvest we need shepherds we need priests we need nuns this is what the lord is telling us to pray there is no other prayer request the lord jesus made let us pray earnestly for the vocation to priesthood and religious life vocation for servants it's very important let's kindly stand wherever you are let's sing the hymn of offer tree and let's pray for more vocations let's pray for in any situation that we are let people may have an eye to be holy and to surrender their life totally to god